We're at Barbary Shooting School in Wiltshire for the CPSA English Open Sporting Championships 2021. And the weather is dreadful. I'm James Marchington. Welcome to Clay Sports TV. Over a thousand eager clay shooters had booked in to shoot the first major championship of 2021. After a year of cancellations and postponements, everyone was thrilled to be out again. Barbary had pulled out all the stops to make their first ever major championship a really special event. I asked Barbary's Josh Brown what goes on behind the scenes to stage an event like this. Yeah, it's been a lot of work by everyone to get the grounds ready and get all the targets set and everything. Um, and the pace looked very smart at the start of the week. It doesn't look so great with the mud around this now, but... Um, okay, so the clubhouse, um, that got completed back end of last year. Um, obviously, we haven't really been able to use it much with the whole COVID sort of um, situation. And then we built new stands out to the side of the deer park as well. New stands right, th right through behind the clubhouse. Um, so yeah, a lot more, more stands around the ground as well. It's been tricky. The conditions have made it a little bit difficult for people. Um, it's, it's shot a little bit trickier than we thought it would. Um, but yeah, lots of positive feedback. Stand 10 um, in the driven area behind us here, we've got a, a good right to left stand across off a tower, which is sort of curling quite a bit. And then the line is catching a lot of people out off of there. Um, and then stand 15 out the back of an Arctic trailer, um, we've got a sort of low orange cross with a, with a rabbit, which is catching quite a few people out as well. So in my opinion, like obviously championship shoots, you want the best of the best to win. So, you know, it's, it's to test everybody. Um, you don't want, in my opinion, those sort of championship shoots when you want on sort of slightly lower scores than your, than your average day um, 100 bird registers and things. So it's, it's, it's a championship. Um, it, it needs to be a championship course, so it needs to test people. The sponsors always add another dimension to these big events, and this year's English Open was supported by Ely Cartridges, Swatcom and Musto, as well as Rizzini Shotguns. Here's Edward King from Rizzini Distributors ASI. Rizzini are heavily involved in the Colts programme, and they've provided a selection of guns uh, for all the, the, the Colts to use. Um, hopefully, in the, uh, on the first few steps of uh, a road to... Uh, greatness and stardom later on. The, the atmosphere here is, is, is really positive. It's the first of the majors um, and, and the first of the, of the big shoots. And you can see people are coming here. They're, they're slightly concerned about how they're gonna shoot, obviously, because no one's really been out and done, done a, a competition like this yet, this year. Uh, but it's just lovely to be out and, and mixing with people, um, catching up with friends, and uh, you know, the, the atmosphere is good and positive you know, which is, which is great for the sport, uh, great for all of us, really. The very first shooter on the course was Richard Folds. He put in a tremendous score of 112 out of 120, setting the pace for the rest of the event. The CPSA team were there running the admin side of things. This time they were trialling their new shoot computer system, which posts the scores direct to the website as they come in. Here's CPSA CEO Ian Parker. What that's able to do, and we're at the first stages of rolling it out, is to give live scoring updates as we put them in. Um, so as the score sheets come in off stand 15, um, the, the girls in, in the office put them in and it immediately is uploaded. So wherever you are, um, if you're at home, if you're at another shooting ground, or if you're out in the course, you can actually look at your phone um, and look at the page and, and see what's happening on the course. Um, obviously, it takes us a few minutes to put them in, um, but it's a big step from where we've been before. Um, the next phase on that, this is step one, will actually be that the referees themselves uh, will be able to score electronically from the stand and it will be live scoring as you shoot and as you score. Uh, that's a little way off now. We're going to trial it at some of our championships this year. Um, but it's a you know, great thing for the sport uh, and I think it's, it's, it's of great interest and the comments we've had on it have been, been fantastic so far. Over the next few days, the weather got steadily worse with high winds and driving rain making things difficult for the competitors. At times, it was a challenge just to stay upright in the mud. Several shooters came close to Richard Fold's first day score of 112, but no one could match it. Defending champion Mark Windsor shot on the Friday in dreadful conditions. He's still recovering from a nasty broken shoulder and collarbone a year ago, but he shot brilliantly to get into the top six with a score of 104. 
The following day, junior lady and rounding shooter Amy Eastman shot the course with her dad, Phil. I thought it was a great course, something there for everyone, something there to test the bigger shots. Um, some stand 15 is a bit interesting. Broke my school card up a bit. Um, but no, other than that, really, really good course. I'm so glad we didn't shoot yesterday because I think, well, I've been drenched. So I feel sorry for everyone who did shoot and all the refs. <laughs> um, do you know what you scored? Uh, I think 97, I'd say. But, um, I had a really slow start. Um, but I picked, dig, dug deep and picked myself up and managed to straight a few stands, get some under my belt. And then again, stand 50 was the one that knocked me down a few more. <laughs> um, I shoot the brown in 75. I have done for about... I think it's about six, seven seasons now, something like that. Um, love it, wouldn't change it. Um, I used to struggle with the palm swell, but I've manned up now and just gone with the basics. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, when I first chose the gun from Browning, the reason I liked it was because of the black and the gold. There's no other logical reasons for other than that. I like that I shot well with it. Um, it's, it works for me, don't change something that's bro not broken, so. I don't know, I haven't actually looked at the scores, so I don't actually know any of the, any of what the other ladies have done, or so we'll have to wait and see. In fact, Amy's score of 97 was more than enough to win her the ladies' title, a clear four points ahead of her closest rival, Cheryl Hall. With slightly better weather on the Saturday, it was all change at the top of the leaderboard. Martin Myers moved into equal second place with Julian Freeman and Jamie Pierce on 110. 2016 champion Chris Childerhouse, another Browning shooter, was hobbling around the course on crutches after breaking his leg a few weeks ago, but still managed to hit 107 to claim his spot in the top six, at least for the time being. Richard Fold's 112 still held the top spot though, and it looked like he'd be going into Sunday's six-man superfinal with a clear lead. Then in one of the last squads to shoot round on Sunday, former world champion Richard Bunning equaled Fold's score, guaranteeing a thrilling head-to-head -head battle in the super final. After a last minute shoot off to decide the sixth super finalist, we trudged out through the mud and rain for the big showdown. The six finalists shot each stand in turn, and it quickly became a two horse race between the two Richards, Folds and Bunning. Neither was missing much, and they went into the last stand level pegging. Foles shot first and struggled with the long, tricky targets, dropping one complete pair and two singles. The door was wide open for Bunning to breeze in and take the title. He just had to hit four of his last eight targets. He hit one and missed one, then missed an entire pair, then another hit and miss. As he called for his final pair, the best he could hope for was to equal folds and force another round. But it wasn't to be. The first target slipped away and it was all over. Folds had the title in the bag. Cheers. Bunning knew he'd let the opportunity slip through his fingers. I never looked, to be fair. I knew it was close on that last stand and actually with Richard missing all those on the last stand, I thought um, it was there, but I missed the first single. Yeah. And uh, if I'd have hit the, probably the first single, I'd have known where to be, and I didn't. And uh, anyway, I missed a going away one. I just made, I probably gave it to you on the last stand, but um, that's shooting for you. Yeah. Point time you lose some. Yeah, Great event. It has been a good it? week. Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, so, yeah congratulations to Richard. And um, yeah. yeah, we carry on and try again. That's all we can do. But um, yeah. Yeah, it's been a good week. Good. All in all good. good Thank stuff. you. Foltz was thrilled to take the English Open title again after a gap of 13 years. Well, I had a sneak peek of the TV just before we shot the last stand. Um, and I think, to be honest, Richard gave it away rather than me winning it on the last stand, because I think he was in a better position than I was going into it after it I'd already shot it. Strong position on that last stand, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. But yeah, it just goes to show that you never know what's going to happen until the last shot's fired. Absolutely. <laughs> it really was right down to the last yeah. shot. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Well, let's get inside out of this weather, eh? Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Thank well you. Well done. Congratulations. Right, so congratulations to Richard and everyone involved in a great competition. We're looking forward to plenty more exciting clay competitions through the summer. For all the latest news, kit reviews and more, make sure to follow us on Facebook and at fieldsportschannel.tv slash claysports.